This is Dr. Lux, and I'm going to very quickly show you a summary of what we are doing in class uh, on numerical analysis for steady state mass uh, convection problems. So, for the two dimensional hollow solid chamber shown below, and it's this over here, so it looks like this. So it's got a hollow part and then around the edges is going to be some sort of air or something blowing over it. Um, at the inside surfaces, the concentration is going to be held constant at 6 times 10 to the minus 3 kilomoles per cubic meter. So maybe it's like a pipe that it's got flow going through there with that concentration. Uh, at the outside surfaces, the convection coefficient is 2 times 10 to the minus 7 meters per second and the concentration of the surrounding, so C infinity, is 2 times 10 to the minus 3 kilomoles per cubic meter. The diffusivity of the solid is given as 1 times 10 to the minus 9th meter square per second, and we have a grid size that's evenly spaced, delta x and delta y are both equal to 0.005 meters. And what we want to do is find the diffusion rates per meter of depth, so we don't know how long this object is, but we'll just say you know, assume one meter. Uh, the distribution coefficient between the uh, phases is going to be one. And so I've just taken that given information and entered it into the spreadsheet here so that I can use pointing methods to get started. So what I want to do is I want to build a um, grid for this. Now they've shown you how they built the grid for what the points they're going to calculate. And this is perfect. This is exactly what we want to do. But the issue is that when I enter these things, I'm going to be doing calculations for these points. So whereas the object is one, two, three, four, five, six, six little chunks across and six little chunks tall, the points I'm going to be calculating, there will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those because I'm going to be getting the corners of each of these pieces. And so what I enter into my grid will actually be the corners, not the centers of those squares. And so it's going to end up looking a little different. So I've already set up this grid. So I set up the grid and I put in the given information that I know that the concentration on the inside is fixed. So these are the inside edges. And I know that out around the edges, not on the edges specifically, it's 2 times 10 to the minus 3. And what I've tried to demonstrate for you here is that the actual center of the object is where these blue lines are here. So these points I'm calculating are going to be at this corner here, this corner here, the midpoint of this line segment, midpoint here, corner, etc. Okay? So the points I'm calculating and the squares are actually representing the specific points at the edges of each of these little blocks. Now I need formulas, and the formulas that I have are from the notes or from the textbook, and this is what the formulas say. And they say that the flux, the average flux, is going to be related to the concentrations and the K sub C, so the mass transfer coefficient, times what's going on on the outside of the object. And then the average, weighted average, of what's going on on the inside, so all the solid pieces around me. And this just comes from numerical differentiation, so the delta x over delta y for dx dy, that is the concept that we're using here. But when we have shapes, it gets a little more complex, and so at exterior corners, which we have some of those, um, then this is the formula that I would use. For an interior corner such as these, there's also a formula in the book. We don't happen to need it because they tell us that the concentration is fixed. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use this formula to estimate the um, concentrations at every point in the grid, and then once I get that solution to converge, I'm going to come back and use that to calculate the flux. So I'll show you the getting the thing to 
Converge and sort of the Excel tricks is going to be in this little video here. So we're only working steady state problems, so that flux should be zero at any particular location at steady state. So in that case, if this is zero, then I can use the this side equal to CNM and this thing as an equation. I can divide through by the KKC delta X over DAB plus 2 and solve for C at NM, a particular location. And if I do that and start entering points over here, what's going to happen is if I'm entering stuff for this particular location here, for instance, I'm going to be needing to use points here, 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 and here, so all the points surrounding it. But then when I come over to calculate this one, it's going to use this point, this point, this, and this. And so this one is using, so the yellow is using the blue to do its calculation. The blue is using the yellow to do this calculation. And that's going to be called a circular reference. And that becomes a problem. And so what we have to do is we use an initial guess and we're going to then improve our guess every time until we get this, th these things to truly be equal for the entire set of calculations. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you a little bit. So I'm going to start by putting in initial guesses. And it's just easiest if I just put in zeros everywhere. Um, <laughs> you don't have to use that as your first guess. It's just simply a convenience. So... Let me put in a bunch of zeros. Okay, so I have some initial guesses there. And then what I'm going to do is use these formulas. So at a boundary, what this is saying is that at position NM, so, okay, well I've got this one highlighted. I'll use this one here. So I'll work with this particular spot right here. Okay, at position NM, I'm going to say that it's KC delta X over DAB. Well, that sounds like I'm going to be using KC delta X over DAB a lot. I've got all those numbers, but I did combine them, or I can combine them. Um, so this is going to equal KC times delta x, and since delta x and delta y are equal to each other, or they're supposed to be, um, then I can use either one interchangeably. Sorry about that. Okay, so K, that quantity is going to equal to 1 in this particular case, and this should say 5. So I apologize for that. Um, anyway, so I've got that quantity there. So I'm going to take that quantity I just calculated, and I'm going to multiply it times C infinity. So C infinity is going to be the point to the outside of this. And I'm going to add to that one half of two times, this is going to be the point that's opposite to the boundary. So the point in this case below, plus the points on either side that are along the boundary. And then I'm going to divide all of that by K times KC delta X over DAB. So K, which is up here somewhere, times that quantity I had below. And then I'm going to add 2 to that and divide all of that. And so I get an answer there. And that answer isn't the actual concentration at that point because that's assuming that all the points near it are going to also be 0. But I can take this and paste it at all the points that are going to have a similar formula. Okay. Now, at this point it's warning me, and 
Excel does different things. I've used um, the formulas within this program before, but it's warning me that there are circular references. That's what these blue things mean. So what you're going to need to do is come over to File, and go to Options, and Formulas. And you want to enable iterative calculations. And you can set this up for as many as you want. I'm going to just simply so that we can see what's happening. I'm going to do one. And that's interesting that it did that. Okay, so when it does that, oh, I know why it did that. <laughs> because when I did that copying and pasting, I'm going to put my formulas back in there. Okay. This is the one where I originally did the things, and this is pointing to all the right cells. When I copy it over to here, where is it pointing? It's pointing to places where there are not numbers. Okay, so my copying and pasting is really what's at fault. I'm trying to do things like multiply units, and that makes no sense whatsoever. So, let me come back to my original one. I'm going to put zeros in on the ones that I messed up. Okay, and what we're going to do <laughs> is when I copy this, I want to make sure that it knows for all the constants to always go to the correct cell. So I'm going to insert dollar signs. Dollar signs, it means it goes to a specific cell. So in a specific cell, I'm going to use a dollar sign in front of the row and a dollar sign in front of the um, column. But the quick way to do that is to use the have your mouse over that cell number, so C26 for instance, and put in, use F4. So the F4 key will insert dollar signs there. Now all the things that are um, here, those are all going to be things that I want to be relative cell references, so I'm not going to do dollar signs there. I want it to know, I want the cell next to it or above it. But the ones that are the constants, I want it to always be sure to refer to the correct cell. So C26, there we go. Let me see how it copies and pastes this time. Ah, now we're fine. Okay, so I'm going to do the same sort of thing. For the corner over here, I'm going to use this formula. So it's going to say that I'm going to take this KCA, KC delta X over DAB times C infinity. So C infinity is right there, plus 0 0.5 times. It's going to take the ones that are on the interior. So C18 and B19. And then I'm going to divide by, oops, and I forgot a parenthesis. This constant down here times capital K plus 1. And for points on the interior, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply, I don't have the formula copied from the uh, book, but it's going to be the average of all the other interior points in here. So that plus the one below plus the one over here, plus the one over here, and divide by 4. And I can just go ahead and insert that. And you see it's recalculating every time I do one of these. And I want to set these numbers so that they are just numbers and Okay, there we go. So we can really see what's going on. And these numbers here are going to be fixed. Well, this still isn't, you know, done. I need to copy these everywhere, and I can adapt the formula. That's certainly something you can do. But one thing you can do is you can notice symmetry. That across here, I expect that this is going to be um, the same pattern all the way around. So as they've shown here, I have symmetry along the y equal x line and symmetry along the y axis. And so as a result, I really only need to deal with one little one-eighth region of this. And so therefore, I can actually just copy
and you can just set these equal to each other. And you can go ahead and play with this. You can either enter formulas or you can go over and keep picking things up. And to get this to continue doing calculations, just do something, anything, and it will redo the calculations until it's happy. Okay, And when you start seeing no change in your grid, then you know that the calculations are complete. So I'm not going to complete this problem. The completed uh, solution is in Canvas for you. But I just now want to, let's pretend that this was actually completed. And if you want to figure out what the um, flux is, you're going to use this formula. And we have delta x and delta y. They're equal to each other. So it's going to be the diffusivity times cn m minus cn m minus 1. But the problem is that I want it over the entire surface. So if I just calculate this for these points here, that should be fine, okay? Except that I want to then do that for all the way around. Okay, so it's helpful to look at the picture, the original picture. And so for that, let me see if I can insert a shape. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the concentration difference here. Okay, where I just, oh, that's too faint, you can't see that. There we go. Okay, so just in this little region right here, for instance. And so the concentration difference is going to be those two along the edge. I'm only worried about what's happening along the surface. So the concentration difference across there, okay, times the diffusivity. And then for the total diffusion, I multiply by the area, which is this delta, times the one meter of length into the board. So I'm going to conclude this video here because I think the rest of it you can pretty well follow through either with the textbook or uh, by looking at the solution in Canvas. So this concludes this little video trying to introduce you to numerical analysis for uh, mass transfer.